Hello everyone and welcome back to That Paradox Computing. So we're here to take our first look at the Command Computer. It's a new block that's been added in this uh, beta of version 1.66 for Computer Craft that I'm having a play around with. So expect to see it coming soon. Uh, basically, it's a computer that can do everything a command block can do. Very neat. Um, it can do things, well, like this. And let me just check something. Oh, just gotta change that. There we go. This is all being done by the computer. Oh, there they go. <laughs> and... So, um, yeah, that was loud. Uh, sorry about your eardrums there. Cool. Um, so, yeah, that computer just built all that stuff, played all those sounds, and spawned in all those zombies. Really neat. Uh, so, let's get into how you use these command computers. So, uh, for those of you familiar with the command blocks, or unfamiliar with the command blocks, basically, you can just put into them any of the um, commands you usually type here in your console, like set the time, or let's uh, toggle downfall. So, this will turn, toggle downfall turns the rain on or off. So, there we go. We toggled the rain on. And with that command in a command block, we can um, give the command block a redstone signal and turn the rain back off. Nice. Well, we can do that from a computer as well. I wrote a little program called Rain, and look at that. It's dying to rain. It's getting all dark and stormy. And we can turn the rain off again using that program. Neat. So, how do you do it? Well, if we edit Rain, we can see here the command to do it. Now it's commands dot toggle downfall. Now toggle downfall looks familiar, doesn't it? We've seen it in here slash toggle downfall. Well, basically there's a new commands API, which is exclusive to these command computers. Now command computers can only be obtained by an op in creative mode. So you have to have full powers and be in creative mode. And you actually have to be an op in creative mode to even access one of these computers. If you're not, you won't be able to look at it even. So there you go. It's basically the same rules as using a command block. Cool. Um, so how do we figure out exactly what we're going to type in here for our commands? Well, that's going to be easier if uh, we look at our next little uh, program that I've written here. And let's look at this one called time. So we can see, uh, where's the sun? The sun's pretty much right above us. This, What this is going to do is set the time to 7 in the morning. So look at that. Now the sun's over there. Um, now usually to set the time, you do time, set, and 700. That would be the what you'd usually type in to set it to 7 in the morning. Uh, if we edit um, uh, time, edit time, there we go. Uh, we can see this command. Now, that looks fairly similar to what we just typed in. Let's type it in again just down here so you can see it. Time set 700. So, we can see a lot of similarities like time, time, set, set, 700, 700. So, if you think of it this way, the forward slash is commands dot, then after that, you've got your function, so the function is going to be time, and then everything after time has got to be inside the brackets, has got to be in the properties of the function. So we can see here set and 700. Obviously, everything has to be separated by a comma in Lua, and um, yeah, oh, and if it's a word, it's got to be in inverted commas, so it's identified as a string. Unless it's true or false, they don't have to be inverted in inverted commas. So those two words are excluded. But besides that, I think, yeah, every word should have to be in inverted commas. So we can figure out just by seeing the commands we'd usually put into a command block or type into our console. Um, yeah, we can figure out what the command is going to be in Lua. Neat. Let's look at another example just to see that in action again. Um, let's run TP. So this is a little program I wrote that's just going to teleport me a little bit away from the computer. So that just teleports me over here. Very cool. Um, let's edit TP, and we can see this again. So usually to teleport, it would be TP uh, player name and then some coordinates. Um, let's try in here, and look, I'll just write it out again so we can see it. So it would be slash TP uh, remorseless, and then what is it, negative 270, 34. Okay, so 
This would be how you'd type it into a command block. Um, so we can see here, so if you think of the forward slash again as being your commands API, so commands dot, and then TP being the function, TP, and then everything after the function has to go in the uh, closed brackets. So we've got the player name, and because it's a word, it has to be a string. And then we've got our X, Y, and Z coordinates to teleport to. And they're just the same, except each of them has to be broken up by a comma. And that's it. So you can figure out any command just by thinking of it that way. Cool, cool. Um, so let's take a look just at, oh, well, let's look at a couple more. I wrote some things. Um, let's say no time. So um, this will stop the sun from moving across the sky and just locks time in where it is. So we can see there, the sun is now no longer moving. Uh, and let's have a look at that. So edit no time. And here we can see it again. So you can imagine just by looking at this, what the command would be in the console or in a command block forward slash game roll space do light cycle space false. And so that's, um yeah, that would be how you would turn it off normally. And here we see it here. False means turning the daylight so cycle off. So the sun stops moving. If that's set to true, like in this little program here that I've written, then um, the sun will move. And now we should be able to see the sun. Yeah, very slowly the sun is moving across the screen. Neat. Oh, um, and let's just check out one last little program that I built called uh, Built. And look at that. A piece of dirt just appeared. Let's do it. Maybe somewhere we can see it. Uh, yeah, there it is. Bam. So, um, yeah, that's a piece of dirt. To do that is we say edit build. Here we go. So here's the new one. Commands.getBlockPosition. What that's going to do is uh, get block position is going to return the X, Y, and Z coordinates of the computer. So we assign it to these three variables of X, Y, and Z. And there's this one here, commands.setBlock. And what that does is build. And so we give it the coordinates we want to build at. So we're building it on the same X and Z coordinates, but we're building it plus two on the Y. So X and Z are, you know, X along there and Z along there. And Y is this way. And we plus two on Y, which is one, two, which is how we get our block of dirt there. Neat. Um, cool, cool. Well, look, let's just have one quick look here at the, um, program that I wrote over here. Now this will be in a paste bin in the description. So yeah, check the description if you want to see this code for yourself. And just very quickly, uh, I'm going to skip all this stuff about the monitors and things, but here we see commands.gamerule command block output false. Basically, usually whenever you use a command block, it's going to put stuff up um, in your chat and it just spams your chat and it's really annoying. So yeah, setting it to false turns it off. So I recommend you do that. Nice. Um, so then, yeah, oh, we're doing that um, get block position that we just saw over there when we did build. Um, so we're getting our X, Y, and Z coordinates of the computer. And then we're doing a bunch of monitor stuff. Now here's a new one, command.playsound. So when we go to start building the wall, so the user uh, touches the monitor, monitor touch here, um, the, yeah, it starts building the walls. The first thing it does is it places sound in Enderman wood when it teleports. So that gives us that little noise when the walls start appearing. Um, and to build the walls, we're using that same commands.set block and we're giving it the uh, location we want it to build at. Oh, one thing I did actually skip before, didn't I? Is, um, sorry, you put in the X, Y, and Z coordinates and then you tell it the kind of block you want it to build. Um, so in this case, I'm using Minecraft colon iron bars. Now, um, what I was using over there was uh, Minecraft colon dirt, but you could also have put in, th I actually had written just here, the number three, which is the ID for dirt. So um, you can use its numbered ID or you can use its uh, named ID like this, the block you're going to build. Cool. Um, so we've played sound and we've, this is how we're building it. And to build those iron bars, basically it's a for loop inside of a for loop. So the first time it goes through, it gets the Y coordinate it's going to build at. And then after that, it gets the X coordinate it's going to build at. And then it keeps building on the X coordinate until it builds across. Now, how, what did I just say? Basically, it sets the Y coordinate. So we get it sets the height, then it sets the X coordinate that it's going to build on. And then it keeps building on the x coordinate at the same height across. 
and then once it's gotten across as far as it needs to go, um, it loops out into this loop again, which sets the Y coordinate one higher. So it sets it from like there to there and then builds across on the X coordinate again and then repeats a third time to build it up there. Did that make sense? I hope so. Anyway, um, then we basically just do that for each side of the cage. So we do it on the front, then we do it on the back, then we do it on the left, then we do it on the right, and then, um, oh, sorry, a bit of bad formatting in here. Um, there we go. Then we summon the zombies. So that's command.summonzombie and the coordinate we're going to summon the zombie at. Now, when you go to summon a mob, um, it's basically its name, except it is a cap. Just remember it's a capital at the beginning of the name. That caused me some problems. Um, and then we're playing the sound of a gas screaming, and we're um, angling that at all players. Oh yeah, so this um, command stop play sound. Basically, um, to do that, what you're doing is you get the file name of the sound you want to play, so you can Google that to find all the sounds you want to, and then there's this at A, which means at all players. Um, so you could put just a player name in there, so I could just put remorseless, my, my uh, character's name, or I could put in um, at R, which would target a random player, so it would just play that sound at some random player. Um, yeah, you can do, oh, there's lots, you can do it at the nearest player, the furthest away player, lots of stuff. You can, you know, this is also something you'd use when you're giving items to players or putting potion effects on players. There is so much more that you can do with these blocks than I'm covering in this video. It would take it hours to go through all the things you could possibly do with a command block. Um, neat. And yeah, so we, yeah, summon all the zombies and then that's basically done. Then we wait for the user to touch the screen again. And once it does that, we're basically just doing this building thing. When we built the iron bars and the, you know, those four loops, we're doing the exact same thing again, except we're changing the block ID to zero. So we're not building iron bars. Instead, we're building the block, which is the ID of zero, which is space, which is air, which is just nothing. So basically it's deleting all the iron bars. So that's how we get rid of the iron bars. Um, so again, front, back, uh, left and right. And guys, that's it. So in 70 lines of code, we've made a very neat little thing and it was actually really simple to make. It didn't take me much time at all. Um, so yeah, that's how you can use this to do awesome things. So let's just check it out again. So that's the sounds playing as they spawn in, building on you know each side. It's a horrible noise. It doesn't matter how far away I go. It keeps playing it at me. Um, cool. And so yeah, we're in peaceful mode at the moment, so all the zombies disappeared. Um, and yeah, so then we can see it now building the air blocks to get rid of all that stuff. Well, anyway, check the description if you want to see the pace bin for that. Um, nice, guys. Well, look, I hope this has been a good introduction to Command Computers. I hope you've enjoyed. Uh, like and subscribe if you have. Otherwise, thank you for taking the time. Uh, I've been That Paradox. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time. Cheers. Cheers.